to honor you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Because of what only you can do. Lord. Lord, I pray that you will visit every life here this morning. Amen. Open our eyes to see. Amen. Open our ears to hear. Amen. Speak to our understanding. Amen. Visit every family here. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Break every satanic yoke. Amen. Invoke upon the lives of men and women. Amen. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. If you believe your prayer is answered, shout a better amen. Amen. Jump the hands for the Lord. Hallelujah. As you take Thank you, seat. Jesus. God's presence. Today we are looking at 11 habits that destroy personal and family success. 11 negative habits that destroys personal and family success. Remember this is family breakthrough service. If there will be a success or a successful marriage, a successful destiny, a successful personal life, a successful marital life, these habits are key habits you must fight. You must deliberately fight them in your life. Because Success doesn't come automatically to a marriage. Success does not come automatically to someone's life. And there are several things that happens in your life here that can determine whether you make heaven or not. If you neglect certain things because you feel it is not, you feel you can overlook them. They have the capacity to stop you from making them. When we look about marriage, God's will for marriage, God's will for a marriage, for a family, is to grow in successive success. Every marriage Every family life is expected to grow in success. The Bible says the part of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5. From verse 22. I'm going to read to verse 28. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in every faith. In every faith. God expects the wife to be submissive to her husband. Any governmental, personal orientation projected against the truth of the word of God is a fallacy. If somebody comes up and says there should be gender equality, there is nothing like submission, men and women should be equal in society, you can be equal. When they come to marriage, the woman must submit to her husband. In marriage, there is no gender equality. Scripture made it very clear. Why submit to your husband? Of course, there's also a place where God even encouraged the husband also to submit to the wife. We must follow scripture. Verse 
24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the wall, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So all men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. In fact, the way the Holy Ghost put it for me is that he that loveth his wife, loveth his life. He that loveth his wife, loveth his life. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. When true love is at work, the subject of understanding in marriage is a clear thing. It is never a problem when there is a true love and understanding of love. Many things people call love today is not love. It's just infatuation. What many people call love, I repeat, is not love. Your love, true love, is tested after marriage, not before marriage. True love is tested after marriage, not before marriage. It is everything you do before marriage is Riaza. Somebody say Riaza. Riaza. You are Riaza. It's after marriage. We will know whether a man loves the woman, whether the woman loves the wife. So many negative stories everywhere because of the rate at which immorality is prevailing in the land. A man cried on social media. Why was he crying? He suddenly found out that the only, the only daughter he has been spending money on, spending money on the girl, he found out that the girl is not at his child. And even the mother of the child, who is his wife, he was the one that sent her to school. You know our Eastern friend there now. You can send a girl to school and they will finish university and they become your wife. Investment. He sent the lady to school, come out of school, marry as a wife, and after many years they had a child, and after a few years he discovered that the child is not his own. He was crying like a child. What have I done to deserve this? From my observation and research, I've discovered that a lot of men have committed suicide because of that. Finding out that the children they are taking care of is not their own. The reason is because what we call love before marriage is real. It's after marriage we see what is called love. So you need to understand that if you are a child of God and you truly want to make heaven. You must be determined to fight against sexual immorality before and during marriage. I'm going to come back to that. But I want to hit on something in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Ephesians 5, verse 21. I say that it's a place where God also commands the husband, the wife, to submit to each other. Yes, there are some certain places where the husband can also submit to the idea of the wife. But it's not every time. Do we understand? Ephesians 5, 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourself to one another in the fear of God. That is general. That is general. Praise God. 
But as a woman, don't always expect your husband to submit to your own ideas. Don't always expect, the Bible says, the Bible says, to submit to one another. Amen. Amen. Negative habit that destroys personal and family success, that destroys marital success, number one, is fear and anxiety. Fear and anxiety. When a brother, a sister, a man, a woman, you are always anxious. At times when you are over anxious. Anxiety means to be worrisome. Always, always worry. You worry a lot. You are fearful. You are apprehensive. When you are given to this kind of attitude, you will discover few things in your life. Number one, you will discover that you are always tensed up. You are always tensed up. Number two, you find out that it is hard not to go and not to complain. You must complain and mom. More morning and complaining becomes a normal thing for a man, a woman who is full of anxiety. When you are full of anxiety, mom. Number three is fear. You are fearful. You are fearful. Just like the family of Job, the man Job was afraid. He was fearful. I hope my children have not sinned against God. He, whether they sin or they don't sin, he will go and get sacrifices and offer sacrifices on their behalf, of course, which is a good one. But it shouldn't be the thing you do out of fear. Am I talking to somebody here? No wonder finally, when the children died, the statement that came out of the mouth of Job is that the thing which I fear most are finally about to me. A man that is apprehensive, anxious, full of anxiety, your life can be attracting negativity. May that never be your portion. Amen. Your wife is going out and you are afraid whether she will not come back alive. Your husband is going out and you are scared. I hope this, I hope this is not the end. Job said, the things I fear most has finally happened to me. Don't fear. Because fear breaks a trap. Fear and traps. Fear is the opposite of faith. Any family, any marriage where fear is, fear, anxiety is promoted. You are going to see a lot of nagging and complaining between the both husband and the wife. Fear. Fear brings suspicion. Fear. Anxiety. According to a research conducted I think it by Chinese or so, or Indians, it was discovered that even cancer is one of the repercussions of anxiety. Cancer. When you worry too much, it can promote a lot of deadly problems and diseases in your life. Now, not only that, what anxiety also causes is depression. Somebody say depression. Depression, depression is a terrible negative outcome of anxiety. When somebody worries so much, God tends up because of situation, you discover that depression begins to sneak into your life. Depression begins to sneak into that family. And let me tell you, depression can easily come. It does not go easily. It can easily come gradually. It doesn't leave you immediately, except God helps you out. That is why anxiety is just the opposite of faith. Anxiety, when you worry so much because of one problem or the other, when we 
may God do this for me? Why will this happen in my life? And because you think so, your blood pressure rises high. When your blood pressure rises high and doctor tells you begin to live on medication all the days of your life, is it not wiser to stay away from anxiety? Go and ask those who are high blood pressure. Then they will tell you that it's not a, it's not a good Avoid it. Avoid anxiety. Avoid being tasted. It brings depression. Depression is even worse. In fact, depression is worse than anxiety. When somebody is under depression, he cannot walk. Please know what this thing. When depression is affecting somebody, you discover that such a person cannot even pray, cannot even think straight. He can't walk again. He's had two hands at the two legs at there, but he can't think straight. To be depressed is like a, is half madness. Because you can connect yourself. You have certificate to get a job. You can't do that work. You can't concentrate in the place of work. That's depression. They say do this. Is it not when you want to pay? When every day they give the person what to do, and instead of doing the job, they just sit down there with barrel of paper looking at staring at the window. When they open the door, excuse me, are you not the staff here? Are you not working? And they talk from window like a mad person. I just look at you. I just look at This man, you are not qualified to work here. You need to go and solve your problem. Maybe it's a spiritual problem. Yes. <coughs> Depression. Just make sure you keep away from anxiety. If you want to be successful, if you want to fulfill destiny here on earth, some people, it was because of anxiety that graduated down to depression that they committed murder and killed themselves in suicide. They felt what else is in this life? What am I living for? Let your faith be high. Let your faith be strong. Depression is the opposite of because anxiety is the opposite of faith. And where there is no faith, any demon can crawl into your life. That is why you see a lot of Suicide everywhere. It was very less to be spoken about here in this part of the world before. But now, you hear even a secondary school committing suicide. The wife just hung himself inside the bedroom. The husband just carried his knife and drink. Ask him why? Because of the way situation of things. Situation of things. Some people are praying to be where you are. Some people wish to have what you have. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Yes, One thing that kills, that destroys personal and marital success, family success, is anxiety. You need to live on that day, the atmosphere of murmuring, complaining. Why is my life like this? Why am I born into this kind of family? Why did I marry this man? Why did I marry this woman? Don't kill yourself. God is making a way for somebody here. Amen. I said God is making a way for somebody here. Amen. Listen to me. When you see that anxiety is filling you up, you need to know Satan is after you. Some of you think it's only when you have a bad dream you say you have attack. Anxiety can be an arrow. Yes. So relax yourself. Relax yourself. Don't kill yourself. It could be because of a child. It could be can you know what this thing is? It could be because of a child. It could be because of work. It could be because of anything. Whatever is the cause of your anxiety, you should fight that anxiety. Because when you conquer your anxiety, you have halfway conquer the problem. If you can conquer your anxiety, you have conquered your fear. If you have conquered your fear, you have halfway conquered the problem. And when you have conquered the problem, when your faith is alive, God can do it again. I say God can do it again. You will rise again. I say you will rise again. It could be a sick child. It could be a problematic wife. It could be a problematic husband. It could be because of financial situation that is making anxiety to call upon you so much like a heavy burden. Throw it away to the Holy Spirit. 
throw it away. I don't mean it. Many years ago, I had, I had a very strong body coming upon me. I was a single. I have been a single that time. And what happened was that I was, where I was working, you know, as a young school leaver, 2004 or so, and I was working there as a computer instructor. That was before I opened my own computer school. And I was lecturing. And um, one of the students, we just finished lecturing and we just, we just chatted because we were all from the same church in those days. And then they began to talk to me and say, You have been here working, you have not been admission. Your life is just like, you know, they are just trying to, it's just from love of my mind. But in the midst of rubbing my they never knew that what they are telling me was hitting me so bad. I am not getting admission. You know, they just talk and they think way down on me. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. It's not long before then that I, I received Holy Ghost baptism, if I can remember. And I, we finished. I walked to the office and I was going home, but as I was going home, if what was my why am I as anxious? I have been a servant of God from secondary school. So when I finish secondary school, I think I should be the first person to get admission. Yes. So why is my own life like this? That was a question I was asking myself. Why will I be seeing vision with people and I cannot see my own problem? Why will God use me for people and they cannot use me for myself? Just admission, bro. Just admission. Somebody say admission. Admission became a serious matter. Within few hours, it was on me. I remember the spot I got to, and I said, "Holy Ghost, this is a burden on me. I have never felt like this before." I transferred this body to the Holy Ghost. I declared it. I lift this body off myself, and I shift it to the Holy Ghost. I became light instantly. As I took it off, I became light and I told myself, I know what to do. I know what to do. I know what to do. And we are me, where me and him normally meet. From that spot till I enter house, I didn't have any problem anymore. But the moment I entered into my mother's room, I closed the door. I locked it. I didn't sit down. I didn't hold my hair cloth or change or do anything. I just locked the door at the back and I stood and said, Holy Ghost. About my admission, speak now or be quiet forever. Speak now or be quiet forever. And I had the voice of God. In I must start. In I must start. In I must start. That my month doesn't pass. I get admission. Don't kill yourself with anxiety. Go back to God. He has a way out for every kind of problem you have. Go to Him. Don't run to men. Go to him, don't, don't, so people run to their problem again. Don't run to your problem. One number one key, I tell you, child of God, number one key that can waste your time, waste your life, make you make more mistakes in life, is when you allow anxiety to, to feed your heart, feed your life. Because of any problem, it brings more money completely, it can it generate a depression. Carry that body in as only goes, I give it to you. It's not my portion. I cannot die because of problem. Are you the only one that will first face that kind of problem? You are not the first person. You will not be the last person. But look at the example of those who had such problem and they came out of it. I push you well. Do what they do, you will get the same answer. Man, I no shake it. I prophesy upon somebody here. Every anxiety that has eaten you up, every anxiety that has eaten you up, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I command it to be lifted away. I command it to be lifted away. I command it to be lifted away. Every joke of depression that is eating you gradually, in the name of Jesus, be uprooted. Be uprooted. Be uprooted. Be uprooted. Be uprooted. Be uprooted. In the name of Jesus. Don't allow it. See, this thing can be. Hey, 
they can shift your focus. It can shift your focus. It can make you make decisions you never intended to make. Yes, I've been there several times. That is why whenever you make mistakes because of anxiety, quickly retrace your footsteps. No, 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 this one I'm doing is that it's not the right one I'm supposed to do. Now this one I'm doing is 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 is, is I can't no, this one is going to hinder me from the real focus where I'm going. And I could trace you need to learn to trace it. Trace your actions. Trace it, trace it, and discover it and return back immediately. If you can return back, you will have testimony to share. Amen. I say you will have testimony to share Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, negative habits that destroy personal and family success, personal and marital success. Number two is complaining about your spouse to others. When you are complaining about your spouse to other people, this is one key that can destroy the success of that marriage, the success of that family. When you complain about your spouse, maybe to your father, to your mother, or to a friend, it became more worse if you complain about your spouse to the opposite sex, who is maybe, you see, who is maybe somebody in the world, is somebody you are having crush on. You make a mistake to discuss about your partner to him or her. You are in trouble. You are finished yourself and you are finished your marriage. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, that is the reason why we say be careful. And I'm still going to hit on another point. Complaining about your spouse or third party. But when I say third party, I'm not talking about your pastor. When I say third party, I'm not talking about somebody who is already having a good home and is helping your own home. Somebody in the place of counseling, somebody who is an elder. When you get the Bible, say elder. Elder means pastor in the world of today. He said, he's sick among you. He's been afflicted. Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So elders there refers to pastors. So in the place where you find yourself that you there is a pressure in your marriage, a challenge, I have seen a lot. You see challenges in marriage. You don't need to go and tell a third party. In fact, it is worse if it's an opposite sex. Yes, except if it is your pastor, prophet, and but be careful. It should not even be your mother or your father. Don't mistake this. If you begin to complain about your spouse or other parties, when they will counsel you, you may not be privileged to receive a good advice from the person you are talking to. And the person you are talking to can have another interest in your spouse. Yes. Can have another interest in that your spouse. And you are gone. I tell you. I have read, I read one on social media where Two girls discuss together. The other one is in a married relationship, not yet married, planning to do wedding. And the other lady was telling his friend, her friend, do you think this guy loves you? Let's try her out. Let's try him out. And this is true. Let's let us try. And then the sister. Do this to her friend. Pretend as if you love my fiance. Just let us check whether from that assignment she gave her, they married each other. The other friend, the best friend, ended up marrying that man. And he was kicked out. As at the time they were writing the story, they have already have about two children. Mm. Be careful. Because you don't know who you are discussing with. You don't know. I saw one the very tragic tragedy, uh, a tragedy where a man a, a, a woman 
was having some friends and was going to discuss about her husband with her friends, telling them that my husband is too strong. Ah, ah, he's too strong. He's too strong. Look, they allow me rest in their house. Morning after night, he's always there. You know? And I was just telling them, my friend is too strong. He, he, the others were just laughing. He never, she never knew that one of them who was a widow is jealous. And that widow went around to meet that man. And the Lord seduced that man to bed. And this wife later discovered from phone and saw this other widow sending text message to her husband saying, Thank you very much. That was the greatest thing that have ever happened to me that you did for me yesterday. And he saw it. And when she saw it, she went to go and buy sniper and put it in the rice for her husband to eat because she was angry and jealous. And while the man was holding his stomach for the baby, <laughs> this woman still carried a knife. Praise God. It's a tragedy. Now she has been arrested, of course, charged for murder. Who started it all? She, she, she began it. And she ended it. And she's ending her own life now because she will be the mother. You will kill somebody, you will be killed. Stop worrying about my husband, my wife, and you are discussing them with another friend. Be careful. It is a negative habit that destroys personal and family success, marital success. Number three, negative habit. A touchy, touchy lifestyle. Touchy. When you are touchy, when someone is touchy, that means that person is a, is a cold man, a cold woman. You know, there's a difference between being warm and being cold. When we say you are warm, that means you are accommodated. You are the lovely person. You are a warm hearted person. But when you are a cold person, you are, that means you are the type that you don't want anybody to come close to you. You have very few friends. Even those few friends, it is by grace that you see your friend. This I don't know whether I've seen such kind of people before. These people that no 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 don't match my leg. No 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 no, you're not my type. No 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 no, I don't like those who talk too much. No no no, and you always find fault with everybody around you. You are the only most righteous person. You are the only wonderful person. That touchy, cold. Unaccommodative. When you are such a person, it destroys family success. Because I tell you, the lot of women who have that attitude in marriage, their husbands are always pushed out. When you are a touchy man, the same thing happens. A touchy man who always does not see anything so good in the life of others, especially in his wife. You complain so much about your wife, you say you don't look at you, look at your life, look at the way. Every time you always find one negative thing, you always attach to your spouse all the time. If you put cup here, she does not have to drop cup. If she drop food on the table, you will say that it's supposed to be on the floor. If you put it on the floor, you say, oh, uh, it's supposed to appear on the table. Praise God. If you iron your clothes, you say, let's iron it well. There are some men like that. I'm touching. Any small thing you react. Any small thing you react. A touching lifestyle cannot have helpers around him or her. You can't. If you like, but they always send me helpers. Is it not those who are accommodating to you, accommodating to you that can help you? When you are touching, you scare away a lot of good people around you. I tell you. Good people love good people. Good people love good people. Are you still there? I don't know whether I got this blessing somebody here. If you want to have a good marriage, a good home, a successful marriage, a successful business, a successful ministry, you must be a, a warm-hearted person, a warm-minded person. Accommodated. Stop finding fault in everybody. That will not have to dress. That will not have to buy the bag. That will look at his shoes. Look at it. You always see. You will always see his spot. 
One man said something. He said, even if an angel come beside me, I will see his spot in the angel life. I will see mistake in the angel. <laughs> yeah, the man is still alive. He is still alive. Lord, for the walks around him, he said, you are a thief. He said, you are a thief. And when they call him on the thief, you know, everybody will say, he will say, I think I was at his back. He did not say anything is wrong. It's only thief that know how to catch a thief. Yes, sir. Somebody shall fire. Fire! Only thief that know what? How to catch a thief. But when a thief look at you, ah! Hey! I know what I'm doing. This thing I'm thinking, I know your intention. You will ask him, Aga, have you been there before? And you must know how to do this thing. So don't be touchy. Don't be touchy. Then the touchy and hold. When you are touching, you are going to be holding a lot of grudges against people. Yeah, you'll be holding a lot of grudges because you are finding fault. Touching men and women are fault finders. Touching men and women are always fault finders. They always find fault in everything they see. If light is full, they find fault. If the light is low, they find fault. If the light is not full and it's not low, they still find fault. You dress well, they find fault. You don't dress well, they find fault. Okay, be in the middle, moderate, they still find fault. They say you are too moderate. In a kosher, if you are a person who is a touchy man, a touchy woman, a cold man, a cold woman. There's a problem there. There's a problem there. How would you enter family where if you see the children, the children, oh, oh, mommy is coming. Everybody around us. Mommy is coming. Yes. But daddy is coming. When they say daddy is coming, now they are not jubilating. They are not celebrating. When the other is coming, every to your tent, oh Israel, the one that will hide on that bed is on that bed. The one that is behind, behind the door, has, 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 has that the entered? Okay, has entered. Has he sat down? He has sat down. Is he sleeping? Children are asking themselves, what is he doing now? He is sleeping. Okay, we can pray now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't be touchy. It scares away helpers, benefactors. Away from you. Number four. Negative habit that destroys personal, marital, and family success. Procrastination in implementing successful decisions. Procrastination in implementing successful decisions. It is not enough to make decisions in marriage, in your personal life. It's not enough to decide. This is what we're going to do. It's not enough to plan. They are not good in implementing. You can plan, but you can't implement. You are worse. God's servant, Bishop Bodebo, said, when you, when, you, when you plan and you don't implement your plan, you are dining with the dead. Will not be your portion. Amen. The ability to implement plan is what brings success in marriage, success in life. You make plans and you fulfill it, and you, you, you enact the plan. You put it to action. Procrastination. This is 2022. You have a plan that this year I'm going to find one particular school or the other I will join, maybe a tertiary institution, or I want to make sure I get my work, or I want to make sure that I, I do my job, or I want to make sure I gain admission, or I want to make sure that I am able to establish a small small business, and all what you have discussed and you agreed, you never put it into action. You never pursued it. You never run after it. It starts in your mind and died in your mind. If they ask you why have you not done it, they say it's because there's no money. Your own is always there's no money. And I've always said it to you that in life, if you want to be successful, money should not be your first priority. Why 
have you not done that thing? No capital. No capital. Stop saying no capital. There are some other steps to take before capital comes. Take those steps first. As a family, as a husband, as a wife, and discussing together, maybe you want to travel out. All of you. Yes, it can happen. I want to travel out. I want to leave this country. Let's plan together. And after you plan, then implement it. Okay. We are going to travel out next year. Okay, how do we get there? How much do we need to go? And you discuss together, okay, maybe three million dollars or four million dollars. How can we save towards it? Don't ever in your life say it's not possible. Can we get five million dollars? Don't ever in your life say it's not possible. When you say, hey, can we ever get it? Can we? When you say, can we ever get it? You have even killed yourself. You have killed that vision. Make plans and say if every month we begin to save 50,000 naira or we begin to save even 20,000 naira, let's see how far we can go by the end of the year. Then next year, we'll do the same thing. You will achieve it if you start what you have concluded, you will get to the finishing line. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, but you are going to carry the one step. And yet, you can pray, oh God. God say, I'm tired of you. Your prayer is even disturbing me. Because the solution to what you're asking is right ahead of you. If you can make a move, you'll get there. A lot of many glorious destinies have never been fulfilled because they are waiting for God to do one thing before they move. And if you don't make a move, most times God is waiting for you to make a move. Angels are waiting for you to make a move. There are people that their ministry closed down. I've had story. The pastor said my ministry has closed down for almost six years. Six years now. The ministry closed down. So why have we not started? And the devil is after me. Devil. Past 10 years, ministry closed down. Why have we not started? No. You have to start anyhow. If God has said that is your life, you have to move. I pray for somebody here. Every root of procrastination in your life is destroyed. If that amen is louder, you are the first to be visited. You are the first to be visited. You are the first to be visited. Can I hear better amen? amen. It's not procrastinating. I will do it. I will do it next week. Some people, the only that will do it next three months. Some I will do it next year. And this year has gone. I will start it next year. The next year comes. You didn't do anything. You say, ah, this year. How do I? Huh? No money, no money now, no money now. Okay, uh, you didn't even make a step. Maybe you have a structure to start a school, or you have a structure to, 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 start, to start an application. You can have an instruction to start an application. Yes, online application. Make a move. Please tell your neighbor, make a move. Make a move. Find one or two people who, who knows about it. Find somebody who is in that field. Ask for counseling. I mean, just ask for some wisdom. How can I go about this thing? Those small, small things you are doing is part of the steps you are taking towards achieving that goal. Bible says the multitude of counselors there is safety. Take a step. If you refuse to take a step, you may be languishing in lack and want. And lack of taking steps is simply another arm of faithlessness. Avoidance. And why people are procrastinating some of them is because of they are afraid to take risks. If I do this thing, it's risky. Oh. Do you know that when you are afraid of risk? You are wrong because even life itself is a risk. Do you know that even your breathing and breathing out is a risk? Do you know what you are breathing in and out? Did you see oxygen? Eh? Eh? As you are breathing in, are you not putting carbon dioxide at times? Even at times, secret somebody smoke, we enter. Am I correct? It's a risk. Even the breathing is a risk. Will you say because of your passing? You see, you see smoke, you say you I will not breathe. That is why at times people carry a catching and cover your nose so that you can still breathe. But are you sure even the catching can the catching hold it? It's a reason. 
One major key that successful people have is the ability to take risk. Ability to take risk. And when I say taking risk, I mean you should take calculated risk. Somebody say calculated risk. Calculated risk. The kind of risk that you know, even if I will lose, it will not be much. If you have seen those who are trading, doing online trading, they tell you, they tell you that if you want to trade, put money that you can lose and you will not be disturbed. That's the kind of money you used to do in your trading, forex trading. Put money you can lose, that if you lose it, you are not worried. Because it's a risk. The market is volatile. You can lose, you can gain. It's a risk. Some people, because of, they don't want to make that risk, that is why they are not married. Hey, am I sure it's the will of God? No, I'm not sure. So the brother will say, sister, I'm waiting, no. Oh, but sister, I'm waiting. Oh, keep waiting. You are still looking at your face. I'm not sure whether you are the one. <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm still praying. Six months, I'm still praying. Seven months, eight months, ten months, I'm still praying. One year, I'm still praying. One and a half years, I'm still praying. Two years, which kind of prayer are you praying? I was on the mountain one day and I met a man who had been on the mountain for three, about three years. Mm. And I said, excuse me, sir, come here. My man of God. What are you doing here? Ah, uh, that they are praying. Pray for what? Then direction when don't don't deceive yourself. In direction. That was the last time I saw him on the mountain. Pray, don't come and start deceiving yourself. It's not prayer, pray. We can pray now, God, as I was out. Stop telling me his prayer for three years. He's something else I'm looking for here. His money, something else I'm looking for. Stop telling me his prayer. He's, he's God. Okay, so we can enter. He doesn't talk. That was the last time I sighted him on that mountain. He moved because he has suffered somebody who told him the truth. You know, at times, truth is bitter. Some of us don't like the truth. I tell you the reason why she was some men, why they are not married, is because they are afraid of taking risks. Hey, if I marry this woman now, after two years, if I now find myself, he's not the one. Hey, I will not return back home. Hey, hey, why are you disturbing your life? But I know the God will serve. You can't put your life and marriage in his hand and it will scatter. You can't. That does not mean that when you see a man or you see a woman, you jump into it like that. No. You pray. Seek the face of God. Pray. Seek the face of God. If it will cost you, I told somebody, if it will cost you seven days passing and prayer, it drives us still. It's worth it. It's worth it. And so I said, we don't fast because they are afraid they don't want to die. They fast fast. If I start fasting, I hate all suffering. Okay, are you okay? What is, what is, what is your problem? If I start, some people that are if I start praying a midnight prayer, hey, demons will come after me. So then, what is your problem? Hallelujah. Then I'm going to take risks. You can't die. You can't die. So stop saying that's of risk. From taking risks, there are people I tell you a lot of people that have been highly successful. It is because of avoidance of risk taking, that is why they are still in one position for many years. I had a story of a person a few days, a few days ago. That was his opportunity to become a multi millionaire. He has started this deal with people, I think they have a brother or so, some of within Nigeria. They have done this thing up to a stage. Uh, if they have not now got to the stage where they should cash out their money. They now got them. Okay, it's time for us to cash out our money, just pay small amount of money. Just they deal there for a small amount of money. He said, Is this still not a scam? That was how he did it. Respond. Somebody else took his lot and they shared the money millions of men. When he now discovered that it was a real thing, he cannot catch up again. Pray. Let God direct you. Take risk. That is one prayer you need to pray. God, give me grace to take risk. Give me grace to take calculated risk. Am I still talking to somebody here? Yes, sir. Prayerfully ask God for that grace. 
ask God for the supporting wisdom. Because there are some things you see ahead of you that you want to take the risk and God will hold you back. You want to make that risk because you don't do it. Something happened, somebody telling a lot of lies on the internet one day, asking me to make an investment. And while I was, I would need the, the whole, you know, the whole uh, discussion of the program looks so sweet, looks so achieving. And I was looking at it, I was nodding my head, this is wonderful, this is good. And I don't know. You know, that is why I'm telling you to build the way God speaks to you. Build it and know it. Yes. God can use even child to speak to you. Yes. yes. God can use the next room, the next room's occupier's radio to speak to you in your own room. Yes. And while I was there, I don't know what popped up on my screen and what was written there. Is, don't make mistakes like others. And I knew that is a message for me not to do what I want to do. But some people, they would just read it and say, no, this is nonsense. <laughs> they are just missed God's voice. At times God will not speak to you directly. At times God will use God. If I tell you the way I hear from God, you will understand that I can be driving and as I drive past another car, the music in another car is a voice of God to me. Yes. You need to know it because many of us we have missed God's voice because we never expected God to speak that way. Our minds are not going there. One day I sat in the room. I hope I'm not wasting time on this. I was in there. And one of my child was playing, playing on our own. And the Lord just tapped me and said, Watch that girl. What am I going to watch? A child is playing. What am I going to watch? It? Watch that game. And I was watching the playing, the game is playing. I said, the Lord said, what do you learn from that? I said, well, if I go, but I, I, I think she's smart. Now, if that is what you learn, then you better hold that word. I say smart, but what a smartness God to do it. The child of God. I know we should be smart, positive, but what? And the Lord told me, have you not read what Jesus said? He said you should be gentle as a dog. But be wise as. And he said, do you know what is called wise as a serpent? When I finish finding out from scripture to scripture, from scripture to dictionary, to, I break down. And it was a key for success in my hand. I want to pray for you. That God will speak to you from every quarter from today. Amen. If you believe it, shout the better amen. amen. Lift your hand and say, Father, amen. speak to me anyhow. Speak to me anyhow. I receive the grace to hear you. I receive the grace to hear you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rise on your feet and give Jesus a shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord, for your word. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. for speaking to me. Thank you, Lord, because I will overcome these negative habits. I will encourage you to get the part two and the part three of this message because we have 11 major steps, 11 negative habits that destroy personal, marital, and family success. Tell the Lord, from today, I receive grace. I receive grace to conquer these negative habits in my life. I receive grace to conquer fear, to conquer anxiety, to fear, anxiety, worriness. I receive grace to conquer every form of depression, complaint, sin. No more Touchy lifestyle. I overcome it. I overcome it. I overcome it. I overcome it. I receive grace to conquer grudges. Open grudges against people. I receive grace. Love from today, I receive grace to conquer procrastination. 